Hello, church. Now that the 81st General Convention is in the rearview mirror, I thought it might be helpful for you to have some sense from me of uh, what my experience there was. There'll be more information coming to you from deputies from Maine and from the communications office. And of course, there's all kinds of news on Episcopal News Service. But I wanted you to hear a little bit from me about what the experience was like and some particular takeaways that I hope that you'll be celebrating and communicating and sharing with uh, the congregations uh, in which you serve. So the first thing I want to say is that the big news, of course, is that we have a 28th presiding bishop, uh, Bishop uh, Sean Rowe of the Diocese of Northwestern Pennsylvania and Western New York was elected on the first ballot on the 26th of June. It's a great thing when there's a first ballot, of course, and uh, I'm really excited about Bishop Rowe, and um, the, he's got a ton of experience. He's both very young and very experienced. He has relationships everywhere in this church, and he's really committed to uh, restructuring things and reallocating resources. So they're given to um, dioceses, um, and it's going to impact and change the general church a lot. Uh, and I really hope that he's successful and that we can support him. I'm ready uh, and willing to go wherever he leads. His uh, installation will be live streamed on the 2nd of November. Uh, it'll happen at the Church Center at 815 2nd Avenue in New York, and we will be sending you information about how to host watch parties. So that's upcoming. It's very exciting. And the House of Deputies uh, re-elected their president, Julia Ayala Harris, and also elected a priest from Kentucky, Stephen Pankey, to be their vice president. A particularly beautiful moment for me was uh, celebrating uh, the Diocese of Eastern and Western Michigan when they became the Diocese of the Great Lakes. You know that Western Michigan uh, is my canonical home. <laughs> and it's a special place, uh, and they've been through a lot the last five years. So for them to have this moment of coming together, it was really powerful. The Diocese of Wisconsin has reunified, uh, so there are no longer three dioceses there, uh, but one, and that was also really exciting. I want to say a couple of words about uh, the my heart being warmed, not strangely warmed, but warmed, uh, when we... Uh, affirmed our desire to be in full communion with the United Methodist Church. This has huge possibilities for us in Maine, and uh, we're not yet there, of course. Uh, this will be officially adopted, I hope, in 2027 at the next General Convention, but it gives us in Maine some time to think and already sort of uh, explore explicitly what ministry with our United Methodist siblings might look like in a local context. Uh, I think this is a beautiful, beautiful gesture towards Christian unity, and for us in Maine, it has enormous possibilities. I want to uh, say how awesome it was to have two of our young people, Eleanor Keniston and Oliver Nolt, uh, joined a bunch of other young people to learn about community organizing and then to lead the entire general convention in prayer and witness for gun safety. Couldn't be more proud of these two uh, young people who were leaders uh, in every way at that particular part of convention. It was awesome. I want to say a word finally about the Palestine-Israel resolution and to say that this compromise resolution uh, is going to be disappointing for people who are on the far left or the far right, or however you want to define those terms, people who wanted us to make a stronger statement in support of Palestine or a stronger statement in support of Israel are not going to be very happy with this compromise. I think that this compromise resolution and the omission of certain um, charged words allows you in your local context to continue to work uh, with Jews, to work with Muslims, to work with people of no faith, and to continue to do our part to advocate for the humanitarian relief of Palestinians who are living in Gaza and Palestinians who are living in the West Bank, and especially for our Palestinian Christian siblings. So I'm pleased with this compromise resolution. 
I've put a link in this pine tree of several resolutions that I think are pertinent and in some ways, at least in my view, uh, the most important for a local context. It, there's uh, a whole lot more that happened than this uh, Thomas Brown curated list here. But I wanted to say how grateful I am to you for your prayers and for the ways in which you're sharing news from the 81st General Convention with the people in your faith community. I think we did beautiful work there. I'm really proud of your deputies, our deputies. Uh, they were faithful and fun-filled and worked really, really hard. Grateful for all of the various people in northern New England who uh, held up the side of the promise of more collaboration among Maine, Vermont, and New Hampshire. I hope you're having a great summer, and I look forward to seeing you very soon.